Charlotte Mason had a very interesting quote. She said, we become prepared by the quiet schooling of nature to walk softly and do our duty towards man and towards God. It's a very interesting quote. We become prepared by the quiet schooling of nature to walk softly. A lot of times, if you start getting out into nature, you will walk softly first because you realize that will not scare everything away. You'll be able to see more things if you are quiet. They will come toward you rather than scurrying. But after a little while, you're walking softly for a different reason. It is because you realize how vast God's creation is. And you walk softly out of reverence for this vast universe and how small you are in comparison to it. So we learn to walk softly. And then she said, we learn from nature to do our duty towards man. Now that one puzzled me for a while. Do our duty towards man. How do we learn that from time in nature? Well, as you get into nature and you spend time sitting quietly, observing, finding out what you can learn about creatures and plants and their habits, not just their names, but finding out all you can about their habits, you realize then when you read someone else's observations about that same animal or plant, you realize all the work that went into that book. You realize how much time that person spent learning about nature, and you respect that other person for what they have done. Isn't that one of our duties toward our fellow man, is to respect them as people? And so we learn to respect other people's scientific discoveries and all the work that went into it. That's, I think, one way that we are schooled in our duty toward other people. But then we are also schooled in our duty toward God. You know, we can tell our children until we're blue in the face. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. But it's not until our kids go out for themselves on a winter night and gaze up at the vast starry sky for themselves, and you say, try to count the stars, sweetie. They realize how vast this creation is and how big their God is. That's when it really is driven home, is when they experience it for themselves. And so we learn to do our duty toward man and toward God. What is our duty toward God? Worship Him. And that really comes into focus when we look at all He has created and spend time in it. But there's one other thing Charlotte said about time in nature. She said that time in nature helps us to get life into focus. Have you ever experienced that? Where you might be, have a big burden, you have such a long to-do list, and you have all these pressures on you and all these stresses, but yet if you take time to go out, you slow down, you breathe, you observe, you feel your shoulders relaxing. That helps us get life into focus. And as we look at God's creation, we realize that behind the clouds, the sun is still shining. A life lesson that is driven home from nature. We realize that there are seasons to life that is shown in the seasons of nature. And that, yes, it might be winter now, but guess what? Spring is on the way. We realize that you have to get rid of the weeds and foster the flowers if you're going to have a beautiful garden or a beautiful child. And we realize that it's easier to pull the weeds when they're small. See, these are all things we learn from time in nature, and they carry over to life lessons. But I'll be honest with you, for many, many years, I did not want to go out into nature. It was not my happy place. I, I knew that in a Charlotte Mason 
education, we should take the children out at least one day a week and do nature study, right? All good CMers know this. And so we would. I would take my kids outside, or, well, at first place, I sent them outside, <laughs> right? It's like, here's your nature note, but go find something to draw. <laughs> they would come back with pictures of mailboxes. <laughs> So then it's like, okay, I'll go with them. All right, we're going out, here we go. We're in nature. Look around, what do you see? Isn't it beautiful? And then some kid would go, mommy, what's that? I don't know. Somebody else would say, oh, look at this, what's its name? I have no clue. No, that, that's not the name of it, sweetie. It means I have no clue, yeah. It's not called I have no clue, yeah. Um, and over and over again, it was like, haven't the foggiest, don't know, uh-uh, mm -mm, no, I think that is a squirrel, you know, <laughs> that's about it, and uh, 15 minutes, good enough, we're going inside, let's go, you know, and we would get inside, and I would slam the door, and I'd breathe a sigh of relief, I made it through, I made it through, hooray, oh no, I've got to do this again next week, <laughs> have any of you been there? It's, and it finally dawned on me after many years of doing this, just keeping it real here, ladies, okay? But after many years of this, it finally dawned on me why I was so hesitant about taking my kids out in nature study. It's because I felt like I was taking them to a party where I didn't know anybody. That can be an awkward situation, can't it? When you go into a crowd of people and you don't know any of them, and you're supposed to introduce your children to them. Wow, that's tough. And as I was mulling that over, the word relation just kept coming to mind. Because Charlotte talked about education is a science of relations, forming relations, and how it's important to form a personal relation with things that you study. And it dawned on me, you know what? Relationships do not just happen overnight. And... They are a growing entity. They keep growing of their own. And so it dawned on me, I do not have to already know everybody at the party. I can take my kids and I can show them how to learn to know the different people at the party. 